Uh, welcome to this brief uh, podcast on sociological theorizing, integrating gender. Uh, I'm Dr. Walters, and this brief podcast should be uh, about seven minutes. Uh, the, the lecture is based on, the podcast is based on uh, the 2006 American Sociological Association Presidential Address, uh, Great Divides, the Cultural, Cognitive, and Social Basis, and the Global Subordination of Women by Cynthia Fuchs Epstein, who was then the uh, among the handful of uh, female presidents of the American Sociological Association. In her article, uh, which, which you have on the course site, Epstein argues that constructs that are created by human agency create deep divides across nations, wealth, race, religion, education, class, gender, and sexuality. She further argues that the boundary that's based on sex creates the most fundamental social divide. Further, analyses of this particular divide, that is, gender analyses, tend to be ghettoized within gender studies in the profession of sociology. That categorization may be the cause of differences. That is, it may force individuals into group-like states. Epstein argued then, all the more the case now, some 12 years later, that all sociologists need to consider gender issues as part of their ongoing work. A key point in gender categories or differentiation is not just the division or the construct, but rather this implicit subordination of women. Other dichotomous categories, such as race and ethnicity, have undergone considerable deconstruction and still are gender remains the most basic and the most resistant to change. Worldwide, women as a category are subordinated to men. There are exceptions. Biological sex categories are markers around which all institutions are organized. That is, division of labor and the family, local and global labor, political entities, most religious uh, systems, and nation states are all organized along the sexual divide. Gender, therefore, is what Robert Merton would have called a master status. However, again, picking up from Simone de Beauvoir, biology is not destiny. Statuses and roles are socially prescribed. The next two slides are point to um, websites and links that are available on the Sociological Theory course site. These will help you uh, locate and find information and data both on goals for women and the current status of women. Most significant of that is, of course, the Gender Inequality Index. So returning for a second back to Epstein, females and males, actual and symbolic roles and the social structure are a seedbed for group formation and group boundary maintenance. All societies and large institutions are rooted in the differentiation and subordination of females. The more group solidarities are in question in a society, the stronger the differentiation between males and females, and the more severe is women's subjugation. Social sorting by sex occurs through social and cultural me mechanisms and their impact on cognitive processing. And I want to highlight that, uh, that last note, or last two words here, cognitive processing. Because one of the things you will see in the Epstein article is the degree or extent to which she points to cognition and mindscapes as the locus of the gender subordination. So female subordination and gender inequality are quite persistent. In sociology, findings of scholarship on women are marginalized. 
Globally, the denigration and segregation of women reinforces male bonds in their institutions. In the workplace, inequality is reinforced by inequality in education. And there are brute examples of global inequality in many, many lesser developed countries. Uh, rape, child marriage, and honor killing uh, those of you who are familiar with my current work, I'm working on CEDA, or the Convention for the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. Uh, there, there have been a number of studies in which the, the, uh, the incidents of these three things, rape, child marriage, and honor killing, is shocking. Uh, and the United Nations has actually identified child marriage as a key and the elimination of child marriage as a goal. Again, returning to uh, Epstein. So here's her theory of female subordination. And that's one of the things we'll talk about this week. Is this a theory? Why does the subordination of women persist? Epstein notes two mechanisms. The first, strong arm, that is the use of threat or force. Uh, law and systems of justice justice do not accord the same rights to protection and property, wealth, and education for men and women. Men own and control guns. Well, this is changing a little bit, but we, don't, we need some data on this. Uh, cultural subjugation, cultural and cognitive mechanisms that reinforce existing divisions and rights. This is a cultural subjugation. Epstein points specifically to Zuri Babel's concept of mindscapes. The practice is inevitable and right. That is, a whole mental idea that subordination is, is part of the sociocultural landscape. It fits, it makes sense, it's inevitable, and it's the right thing to do. It's often grounded in cultural religious and pseudoscientific views that women have different brains or different aptitudes. So uh, I hope you enjoy reading the article by Epstein this week, and uh, I'll look forward to discussing it with you on the course site.